on! Grab a baby and use it as a shield! <laughs> baby? Oh, okay! Oh, baby! Oh, okay! Oh, baby. In middle school, I saw a kid get held down by his own friends who poured ranch on him until he cried. I did nothing to stop it. Anyway, these are the top five best or worst modern cartoons volume eight in no particular order. It's Deuce and Jam time. But first, this video is sponsored by Audible. Reading books takes forever. That's why I prefer audiobooks so I can draw and listen to books at the same time or be able to travel for the summer without having to stop and read. Use the link audible.com slash rebel or text rebel to 500 500 to get a free audiobook and 30 day free trial. I recommend the console wars detailing the completely insane marketing that went on behind the scenes during Sega and Nintendo's rivalry. Again, use the link Audible.com slash rebel or text rebel to 500 500 to get a free audiobook and 30 day free trial. Let's go! Ow! Uh, happy birthday! Ow! And many more! Not to be confused with many more. Yet again, it's time to suffer the adventures of Kid Danger, a superhero comedy not based on a comic, but the Nickelodeon sitcom Henry Danger, which I haven't seen. All these kid sitcoms just feel the same. If you take a look at this opening scene featuring an underage child in his underwear, some of the episodes are written by the sitcom creator Dan Schneider, known for shows like Drake and Josh, Keenan and Kel, and Blow Me 101. He's also known for other things, but let's not talk about it, let's just heavily imply it. Despite being part of the channel for decades, Dan and Nickelodeon recently part ways over nothing. They just want to change a pace and that's it. It can't be anything else. He hasn't been on social media in months, so let's check out his official website, danschneider.com. Please enter your age. <coughs> What kind of website asks for your age outside a porn site? What kind of porn they got on here? Horse porn? Did they got a horse porn? I'm going for horse porn. Then we'll take 1,000 wieners. Just put them in that big ugly truck over there. By the way, don't go on that site. It causes my virus protection to go crazy. But let's actually discuss this garbage. <gasps> my bagels! Squeeze you! No, don't squeeze me! The cartoon does stay true to the sitcom as the animation seems to have the budget of one. This looks like it was randomly generated through Go Animate. And could they not have designed a more heroic symbol than a frickin' Tide Pod? On my world, it means hope. At least Teen Titans Go had stylization. Kid Danger feels like the bare minimum of art direction. It's a real downgrade compared to the quote, motion comic Henry Danger has on YouTube. Not really a motion comic, just a cartoon with limited animation. But the designs are so much better. Why couldn't the full series look like this? Instead, we're stuck with this. Those kids are eating his carcass. Oh, yeah. So sweet. So. What's the show about? It's another one of those superhero comedies where the heroes don't do anything heroic. It's a complete shit post. In episode one, they establish they have a cloning device, but two episodes later, Captain Man wants to clone himself. So their scientist friend offers to do so, but first he needs the captain's PNA. Uh, you mean DNA. No, P. I need your P. Ah! They already established they have a cloning device that just needs some tweaking. Why does this man want his piss? And why is this show called Kid Danger while the live action show is Henry Danger? They're the same character, right? I looked it up. The kid's name in the show is Henry Hart and his superhero title is Kid Danger. Mixing the two and calling one show Henry Danger is terrible brand recognition. That's like if you name a comic The Adventures of Peter Spider or Iron Tony. Bruce Bat and Dick Robin. What the? No! I hate Fudge! Everything about this series is a mess. This feels like a cartoon nobody wanted to work on, so they wrote whatever in. Or at least a cartoon somebody dubbed over. It's disturbing, but I can't look away, so I recommend Kid Danger in the way someone recommends for you to watch Food Fight. It's just freaking weird. You were the one who dropped all that fudge on Dr. Mignac. <laughs> well, guess what? What? That wasn't fudge. <laughs> oh, man! Yeah. I know what you're talking about! Ah, we're flying into the 
sale ah Je te ramène des schlacks, ils ont le sida qui te baisse ta merde Imagine all the anime references and sketchy line art from OKKO OK cranked all the way up. You're watching Adult Swim's Ballmasters 9009. I was gonna cover OKKO OK here, but this similar show could use more support right now. Ballmasters is freaking next dimension shit. It takes us to a future where teams compete in a brutal sport that I don't even know what the rules are. Just like a real sport. <laughs> What can you expect from the creator of Super Jail? The first episode feels like it's on light speed, but they slow it down with its overarching storyline. Ballmasters is one part shonen boy striving to be the best ballmaster like no one ever was, and one part redemption story for an athlete past her prime. Gaz Gibsy. This chick who doesn't give a shit, I love her. Why aren't you helping us? <laughs> because right now, I need your help, Dee Dee. Really? You need me? Yes. I need you to take this hit! <laughs> you drink power, folk! Well, it's nice to be needed. And I need to tear that bitch's heart out through her nose! The sketchy line art may look cheap, but damn do they go all out for some of these action scenes. It's a spectacle of a show. The animation studio Titmouse knows how to keep alive that 90s grungy MTV liquid television style. Ballmasters 9009 is a cartoon only they could make. It really is OKKO OK and all its anime influence with no limits, while also having a bit of a story to keep it grounded. Give this show at least an attempt to watch. Today, we begin the new season of the glorious game, Teams Grab Your Falls! We think that customer service with a smile is the app difference. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to try on. I'm okay. No pressure, take your time. No pressure, take your time. There's no pressure, take your time. Let me take my time already! Around the net, I've been seeing people post images of this... Badger? Her name is Retsuko. She's from Sanrio, the company behind such classic characters as Hello Kitty, Nipple Dog, Pro-Choice Babies, A Fucking Train, Black Bart Simpson, Depressed Egg Slut, and the classic Hello Kitty, just with rabbit ears. Now they bring us a 10-episode Netflix series, Agretsuko. <laughs> I went into this expecting another cutesy anime that, surprise, it's really vulgar, or it's super random, or it gets really dark and people write creepy pastas about it. But it's none of those things at all, thankfully. Agretsuko is a down-to-earth, work-time slice-of-life show. It stays on track with the ordinary life of Retsuko, a 25-year-old office employee dealing with sleazy bosses, annoying co-workers, and other daily worries. <laughs> There's a poster on the bottle with a label on top when you pour for someone. What, did you grow up on a farm? How the hell are you gonna get married if you don't even know that? Screw that guy. I hate him so much! Why do I have to deal with him? She's a real doormat too afraid to say no or defend herself. Retsuko holds in her anguish until she can find a quiet place to unleash her emotions through song. She performs a death metal song once or twice an episode. It seems like it'd be a one-note gag, but they change it up. Akutsuko is the type of show I want more from animation. Stuff like Mission Hill, Undergrads, Kitty Bobo, where it's 20-somethings in their work or college life. I know anime has tons of slice of life shows, but the ones I happen to run into are always based around high school. I'm sure there's more of what I'm looking for, but they're probably not as colorful. Hey, you've got arms like a fat baby. The episodes have an ongoing storyline of Retsuko questioning what her career path will be and if she'll ever score. I know that feel. She's a well-fleshed-out character and the story wraps up nicely by the end. Although, should they do more seasons, I feel the side characters deserve more development. I want more from these characters. They just feel real. I don't know, Kanako. It's like she doesn't want to hang out with us anymore. Us, huh? 
Three times in a row I tried to ask her out for drinks. Three times in a row she blew me off. Huh. And three times in a row I had to sit here and watch you cry into your beer about it, Haida. What's so important she's gotta go do that? <gasps> you don't think she's with a man, do you? What kinda bugs me is the slightly off-line work at times. It's animated in Flash, and you might see the separate parts making up the character just off-center. Ignoring that, the art is still pleasing to the eye. The thick outline characters contrast well against the background with outlines of another color. Any complaints I mentioned have been minuscule. This show's just great. Just when I thought Netflix was dropping the ball on animation, Agatsuko comes in to smack Netflix and tell him, Bitch, pick that shit up right now. Do you actually like your life? I'm not gonna lie. You look pretty wiped out. release of TBS's Final Space, I was impressed by the pilot on YouTube. It promised us a mystery storyline unraveling how this spaceman got into the mess that he did minutes before death. Right there, I was hooked. What also got me is this was made by a YouTuber I've never heard of, Olin Rogers. Final Space to me looked like it'd be the first TV show from a YouTuber that wasn't utter fucking garbage, and it's produced by Conan O'Brien's production company. I fucking love Conan! I still wear this old ass shirt back from his NBC days. You bet your ass I was excited, but once the series premiered, my excitement steadily wasted away into disappointment, like slowly realizing you're gonna be picked last in kickball. Good morning, Gary. Day 1818. How about freaking no? <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. In a way, Final Space is a great show. You're still getting the mystery aspect, all the drama and action is there. But what ruins the show is the main character, Gary Goodspeed, an escaped prisoner who must survive being hunted by space mercenaries that are after his pet alien. <laughs> My problem is, Gary talks like a mixture between all the worst parts of Jack Black, the nostalgia critic, and that one frat boy voice you always hear on Robot Chicken. Oh my double crap! Gary's always shouting with the crap or random high-pitched phrases like, holy shit, shut the fuck up. Let's go! Keep your mouth shut, you lying robot! Oh my god! It's like he learned to speak from the YouTube school of comedy. Every episode might as well start out with What's up gamer? Smash that bell icon. Please ring that like button and post subscription. Mustache, awesome bacon, epic. <laughs> Come on! Here's the thing. Gary's origin starts with him being imprisoned and isolated in a one-man spacecraft for five years, which could explain why he's so manic. But they showed him before he was incarcerated. He was still acting crazy beforehand. Trump! Oh, sweet aspirin. Three drapnoids. Exact change. Tight! Wouldn't the punishment have more consequence if he was more of a composed criminal and then became a weirdo? As it stands, being in isolation for five years did nothing to him. Well, it did set up his desperation for companionship with Mooncake, his alien buddy. I'd love for a jelly-filled, squishy toy of this thing. You ready? Chuckity. I also love Avocado, the space bounty hunter. Contract killers are always fun characters if they have a cause that they're fighting for. Oh, update. I've just been informed Gary speaks like this due to a traumatic experience, and this is just his coping mechanism. Well, shit. I guess the nostalgia critic must have gone through the same trauma then. He's supposed to be annoying. Does that explanation make it okay? No. 
Let's look at SpongeBob. SpongeBob is annoying to Squidward, but is funny to the viewer. The Aqua Teen are annoying to Carl, but funny to the viewer. Gary is annoying to his co-pilot, but is annoying to the viewer as well. To make an annoying character, you don't actually make the character annoying. You just need the other characters within the show to react as if they're annoying. Also, since he's been imprisoned, why is the uniform they gave him just a recolored space military uniform in this universe? Maybe they didn't want to create a new animation rig. From this opening montage establishing his isolation as a prisoner, there's nothing telling us he's a prisoner. I thought he was just on a space mission. It's not until they explicitly say he's a prisoner a few minutes in that you find this out. It's not a twist or a surprise, it's just... Huh? Oh, I guess he's a prisoner. Probably should have made the visuals reflect that, not like animations of visual medium or anything. But back to Gary's shrill voice. Who voiced him? Oh, the creator of the show. Oh, he saw my blog rants on the show. He's gonna fucking kill me. I know this is Olin's baby and he came up with the concept and story, which are great, but as a voice actor with little experience on his IMDb, he drags down his own show. Final Space is something I can sort of recommend. I like everything else, except the main character, who you're gonna spend a lot of time with. I heard he gets more tolerable later on, but I couldn't get past episode three. If TBS could redub this character, I would actually watch this. <laughs> I got one sweet granddaughter's glab. I got a mother loving cookie. You look like your fucking dog died. You think customers want to pay to watch you soak up there? I'm sorry, my son is in the hospital and I. Who gives a shit? Yes, sir. Then get back to work. Now, what was I talking about? Uh, well, punch the douchebags. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. Oh! So, how am I doing? If you're looking for more action cartoons outside Japan, look no further than Last Man. Actually, please look further than that. We have so few right now. Last Man's a prequel to a French comic book and is streaming on the VRV app. Verve. The less you know about the plot, the better. All you need to hear is Richard Aldana is a boxer in training who gets into all sorts of adventures with mobsters, cults, what have you. Through some crazy stuff going on, he has to protect this little girl who he's pretending is his niece making this a story even I can relate to with my quote-unquote niece. Nice. The magic of Last Man is that it does a lot of things right that anyone else would have screwed up. It commits some grand, once unachievable miracle of having episodes in this plot-driven show being about 10 minutes long, but in those 10 minutes, Last Man is fast-paced, yet never feels like they're crunching for time. There's characters I'd like to learn more from, but what we saw from them is enough for now. There's lots of blood and nudity, but it's not in your face about it. They're just casually in there. Mostly. And maybe it's just me, but much of it feels 80s without it being blatant about it. There's no Rubik's Cubes or neon grid patterns, maybe some synth music here and homoerotic undertones, but I'm getting hints of 80s anime, Gem and the Holograms, and action movies that Stallone would be in. <laughs> The animation, much like any anime, is very limited, but it's only to save the budget for when it counts. There's some obvious shortcuts, yet they get resourceful with them, like this scene, where they couldn't animate this girl he's protecting walking away. We ate like an hour ago, kid. How are you still hungry? Go find a vending machine. Thanks. So you only hear her footsteps while we focus on Richard's face, helping us to empathize with him, slowly growing to appreciate this girl he's often annoyed by. Simple things like that go a long way for these characters. And if the art style looks familiar to you, Last Man's directed by Jeremy Perrin, who also animated that one music video with the kids in the pool. You know the one. And the pixelated trucker one. Yeah. 
Last Man will surprise you in the same way. Great action, pacing, smart use of animation. Last Man does so many things right. Also, check out Last Fight on PS4. It's a fun little Power Stone type game, but it's more so based on the comics than the prequel cartoon, so don't expect too many familiar characters here. All that's left to say is Last Man is a true ass man. I'm gonna break your face. We await your return, warrior.